Okay. Hi everyone. Uh, Hi. My name is Noah. I am uh, the IAC National Operation Manager. Manager. I'm very happy to invite all of you to the IAC, the Hadrian hey. Production. I'm very happy to invite all of you to the IAC and the Hadrian hey Production of On the Map, the big reunion of Maccabi Tel Aviv. Mm -hmm. Um, come to check out the IAC webpage for uh, more events and programs that we offer every day for free. Um, and now I want to start by showing the trailer of On the Map movie. Putting the trailer, it's a two minute and we're starting. Basketball was the number one topic in Israel. When I got there, I was really surprised because inside me, I realized that we had a chance to do something. Maccabi Tel Aviv playing for the European Cup Championship? Are you kidding me? Who are these guys? It wasn't that long after the war. The country was starving. Moshe Dayan is the most recognizable face in the world except for Mohammed Ali. He was at every one of our games and shaking our hands, and uh, afterwards the battle begins. Moshe Dayan coming to shake the other team's hand is an intimidation. For the Russian team, they knew that they had the best team in Europe that beat the American team in the Olympics. Red Army Moscow had all of the great players from the national team. Maccabi carried the hopes of a nation. My first thought was, damn. There was no reason to expect Maccabi could beat Red Army Moscow. The streets were empty. You couldn't get a taxi. Nothing moved. Nothing moved. The excitement was just too much. I wanted more. There are some things that are more important than sport. It is easily one of the greatest sporting accomplishments ever. All that excitement, all that pride just came out of my heart. I want to introduce you to Ori Eisen, who is the executive producer of the movie. Thank you, Ori. Okay, thank you. Thank you, Noah. Thank you, everybody. Shout outs to everybody. I see a lot of people we know from Israel and all over the world. Let me share what we're going to do. We have the entire Maccabi team here and some extra special guests, like uh, the other executive producer, Nancy Spielberg. She's here with us. We have Shimon Mizrahi, who's here with us, and also Chris Botright, uh, the wife of Jim Botright here. What we're going to do is uh, give you the rules of what uh, the session is going to look like. I'm going to ask a few questions of the team. We're going to ask them to limit their answers to about two minutes because we have a lot of people. And then uh, towards the end, we let them just chat among themselves and share some anecdotes uh, that we might have never heard before. At 12 o'clock, we're going to wrap the Facebook Live session. And if you want to continue the discussion, you can continue it here on Zoom. Uh, this session is recorded, so you know we will contact your agent to get your commissions of how much you want for us to broadcast it later. <laughs> it's a joke. Uh, we are calling this uh, a lot of things. I call it the Quentin Quarantino Film Festival, so we can keep this light. Uh, in these days of coronavirus, the most important thing is that we're all alone in our houses, but here we can be alone together, which is really why we're here. Uh, the producers, the team, and Danny want to give back to everybody, and that's why we've given the link to see the movie. 
And today, as you know, is a chat with the team. So uh, let's start with some questions and get going. I'm going to ask the question and ask uh, Tal Brody to answer first, Olsi Perry, and one by one by one until we get through. So um, let's start with one question we got before. And if anybody from the audience have more questions, please write them into the chat room and we'll see if we can get to them. Here's the first question. Some of you could have played in the NBA and could have won the NBA championship. Do you think that the triumph uh, to beat this game is more rewarding or not? Or how do you rate the winning of Maccabi compared to winning the NBA championship? Tal, we'll start with you. And we'll un unmute you to get going. Okay, can you hear me now? We can hear you now. Okay, first of all, uh, Shimon Mizrahi was with me when uh, I was with the American team, Billy Walton. <coughs> we were playing in the 1970 World Championships, and at that time, we beat the Russian team. But it wasn't the same with an Israeli team winning against Cheska in Berton and winning the European Basketball Championship. And as... Uh, uh, Billy Walton, as he said in the movie, he was never so proud when he won the national championship, the NBA championship with the Portland Trailblazers in 1977, that his roommate Tao at the same time with Maccabi Tel Aviv that we won the European Basketball Championship. So for me, winning with Maccabi Tel Aviv, the European Basketball Championship was even greater than beating the Russian team in the European uh, or in the World Championships in 1970. Wonderful. Olsi, how do you see that? Let's make sure we are unmuting you. You know, not a lot of people know that also Miki Berkovic had an offer to play in the NBA. Right, Miki? It's right, but uh, many years after the, this game, not after this game, yeah. I had an offer to go to Atlanta Hawks by Yuli Brown. He was watching me playing in the European Championship for team national teams. And I had a good offer. I could make it. And ask Shimon why I didn't do it. <laughs> <laughs> because Shimon has the secret. Okay. Uh, Lucy Hart, same question. Yeah, actually, Yuli Brown drafted me out of college. He was one ahead of Mickey. Yeah. He was coaching Kentucky at the time. But I must say that, you know, as an American growing up, you always dream about playing in the NBA. You're in your back backyard shooting hoops in the snow, whatever, three, two, one, you know, winning a championship. However, there's no doubt for the Americans, I think, that played on Maccabi's team, the significance of Maccabi's victory, not only over the Russians, but also the cup, but especially beating the Russians would have had much more significance as an individual and a player than winning an NBA championship. It just, the dimensions and scope of the impact of those victories could never compare with winning an NBA championship. Okay, anybody else from the team would like to answer this question? Just put yourself on unmute and feel free to share. Uh, yes, um, I was never in danger of being uh, drafted in the NBA. Uh, five foot 10, 155 pounds. Um, I lived in the New York area. I went to summer camps. I played against future and current NBA players. And I could be on the court with them, but that didn't mean I, that I was going to get chosen for a team. I went to Israel in um, my first year. I played in the second league. And then up to the first league, and finally, uh, Maccabi traded for me. I felt very lucky. Uh, I think um, if I think about my basketball career at all, it's with Maccabi as the highlight, but the Russian game, the Russian game was very, very significant. And the fact that we won the championship after that by one point, which no one expected, what made it even better. It, it magnified what happened, but the Russian game was very, very significant. Okay, Danny, do you have any comments uh, on that? Yeah, I, 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 would, I would like to ask, you know, Shimon, how uh, in the world 
did you make all of these guys believe that playing for Maccabi can be more significant than playing for the NBA, making an impact on the country? That's uh, for Shimon Mizrahi. Okay, I would say that uh, we have to, the, the answer to this question has to be divided to a few parts. First of all, you have to remember that Tal was those days uh, after he was qualified with the American army team that were in the, in the middle of uh, the games that they had, I think, in Belgrade those days. And we convinced him to come here to Israel and he did it and uh, he changed all the map of the, the sport in Israel because those days uh, children were going to tennis or to football, but none of them were going to basketball. And when Tal came, he changed all the view of the young player. And then uh, he, he brought us to pick the, uh, as you remember, what we said, the uh, Nes Badalona and games like that. And we have to remember the game in Virton was according to a night decision that was taken in Munich after a very long, long night that all the East countries went after Russia, Yugoslavia, Czechoslovakia, Poland that voted against playing in, in Israel and that they didn't want them to come, didn't want us to come to their countries. And the solution was given by Leon Vandel and those days, uh, Jones and Stankovic, they decided that the one game will be automatically our win and the other one will take part, take part on a neutral court. And Leo Mandel volunteered to organize the game in Belgium and he did the first game against uh, uh, Bernau and the second game against uh, Ska in Virto. Okay, uh, we have another question for the team. Uh, it goes like this. You've done something monumental 43 years ago. What can we tell the children of today to make them feel that they can also achieve something great? Who wants to take that first? Take it. And I just want to say that the, the fact that all these years that basketball schools have grown all over Israel. What Maccabi has achieved, uh, Shimon Mizrahi mentioned about, uh, he said, Nes uh, Badalona. It's called in English, the miracle of Barcelona because we lost 32 points in Spain and nobody thought that we can progress in the European Cup of Cups. When we came back to Israel, we won by 32 points after four points at halftime and there was no three point shots. And Moshe Dayan, who was the chief of staff of the Israeli military at that time, came into the locker room and gave us the words of encouragement. We made up 28 points in the second half, and we went on to the finals against a great Italian team because Italian basketball, now it's the Spanish basketball that's the best in Europe, but the Italian basketball at that time, the league was the best in Europe. And even though that we won one point in Tel Aviv and Levi Eshkol, the prime minister at that time, he made history. It was the first time that a prime minister uh, had to use his pull in order to get a ticket to go to a basketball game. That's how popular the game has come. So the mirror, and we lost by 10 in Italy. So the miracle of Barcelona, and then the miracle again, that winning against the Russian team that beat the U.S. team in the 72 Olympics, gave other athletes encouragement that in their sports, especially in judo, uh, Yale Arad that won our first uh, Olympic medal. And the fact that now even our judo team in Abu Dhabi, they've played a national anthem of Israel. It's an amazing 
feeling. It's an amazing sight. And that's what's happening today that sport can do in the world. And Maccabi Tel Aviv was a great influencer in the achievements uh, above and beyond whatever was expected for, for the team. Uh, you know, Ori, uh, I, I Tal, just, oh, sorry. No, Tal just mentioned the above and beyond. Okay, and, and Lou, uh, you, you'll, you'll add it. I just want to say that, you know, for us, you know, who grew up on uh, Lou, Mickey, Moti, Tal, Olsi, all, all, all the team, you know, these are the legends. For me right now, just to emphasize to everyone, the fact that they're all on one Zoom, it's like uh, uniting the Beatles. You know, the reunion of the Beatles or... <laughs> These are our uh, greatest heroes. And before maybe Lou says something, and I, I want to hear him, uh, I want to hear uh, from Nancy Spielberg, because when we made the movie, she can say and explain the team what was the impact of the movie on the people that did not know so much about this story. Because Nancy joined as somebody who knew little about the story and then helped us tell that to the world. Well, what you just said, uh, my, my op the opener, Above and Beyond, I had finished making that film with Roberta Grossman, and I was in film festivals while, Donnie, you were in film festivals with the Israeli version of On the Map. And when we finally connected, because, Donnie, you said, I need to do more. This is a bigger story. And when we heard, and I did not know about On the Map, but, you know, I, I wasn't in my uh, realm of, of, you know, sports uh, statistics. And just hearing the story and, and seeing what it meant to have Americans and the Israelis join together in, you know, to, against incredible odds, um, you know, people that refuse to recognize Israel's right to exist and beyond. And, and we said, you know, I know Israelis think that this story belongs just to Israel, but that's not true. This is a global story, and it's a story that makes us feel proud as Jews and continues, and I love with Above and Beyond the same message I had, Americans and Israelis coming together to do something that strengthens the country, the Jewish homeland. And so we got, we got together and we started to do more interviews. Um, we brought in a little bit more of that Yankee piece into it so that it would appeal to a wider audience. And people who have seen it just are, are blown away by it. And it really, it, it, it really connects with young people also. So when you talk about what did Maccabi Tel Aviv do back then to bring in young people, you're still bringing in young people by them hearing your story and what you guys have all accomplished. So it's just an incredible honor to be a part of this event. Okay. Lou, let's uh, give you the mic to comment. Yeah. yeah, I just wanted to revisit the, the actual question and say that it's a question of uh, individuals doing what they really love. And it's a bit cliched, but something you're passionate about. You're willing to spend endless hours trying to do better at it, improve your skills, whatever it is, and then working very hard to achieve your goals. That's what it's about. And it's also obviously, as everybody always says, it's, there's an element of luck. And we were very fortunate in a timing of the, the players that came together that had diversified skills and intelligent court sense that was able to create a special event for, for Maccabi over the course of those years. Okay, great guys. We now have an interesting question, so give it some thought and you can all uh, comment. And we see that Eric Menken also has joined, so we'll wave hi to him and ask him to comment as well. Uh, the question is this, basketball has changed a lot since your win. The biggest change uh, is to put more focus on the three-point shot. How do you think the 1977 team would have handled playing this game today? I can say to uh, Stephen Curry put uh, Davidson back on the map where I won. <laughs> he changed the game a lot. Before that time, <laughs> I think the biggest thing with our team was that we weren't afraid. We really, uh, I can remember a time when Lou and Jim and I uh, talked about that we're going to do everything we can to win this game. And, you know, I was the smallest center in Europe and uh, I had to play. We weren't afraid. 
we weren't afraid of the other teams. We always thought we could win. And that's a big difference. When I got to Israel in 1972, it was a given that we were going to lose when we play outside and we have to win when we play at home. And I never got that hit. Uh, and Maccabi, like Lou said, we were very lucky in the players that we brought at the time. Um, Lou was a great player and Jim was a great player. And then also Tal was the best player I ever played with. Mickey was a great player. And um, it all came together. Um, and I don't think we ever were afraid to play against the team. We're talking about when we were drafted. We beat the uh, Bullets, the Baltimore Bullets, the year they won the NBA championship. And if there was a time to be afraid, that would have been it. And still, we went up on the court and weren't afraid. Um, it's kind of like the Israeli army. I think they had confidence that they could win the wars, but the people really didn't. After 73, confidence was knocked out of Israel. But the army always stood firm, and Maccabi always stood firm. And I have to say that it was because of the Anala, the management. Um, I would have stuck a knife in somebody to win a game out on the court. And that's because of the support that we got from Shimon and Shemlu and Igor Shotsky and uh, the things they did for us. It made, I would wake up smiling every morning. I just wanted to be on Maccabi. It was uh, the first time really in my life that I loved basketball. Uh, I wanted to go to practice. I missed the guys. I missed everything about it. And I was ready to kill, uh, to win. I felt like I was brought there to win. Yeah. And that's what was important to Maccabi. It wasn't uh, anything but coming off that court as victors. And we did it quite a few years in a row. I would have done anything for Maccabi. Worry, can I just digress here for a second? Yeah, or if you remember the question, how would the three-point shot would change your game today? That's what the, the audience would like to know, but go ahead, Lou. I'll get to that, but I want to revisit what Eric just said because a lot of people here on this Zoom video probably don't know, but Eric was very influential and I'm digressing away from Maccabi for a minute. In 1979, our backs were up against the wall with wall as as the Israeli national basketball team. We had to play Yugoslavia. We were going down. We were going to finish in I don't know 10th, 11th place. And Eric really gave a huge pep talk, displaying his lack of. Uh, being concerned or afraid of Yugoslavia and really rallied the team in this, I don't know if it was a pregame speech or halftime, and we beat Yugoslavia and ended up going up, and that's when the national team took second place in Torino uh, uh, in 79. And Eric was a big part of that. He was a big force for the team because he was always very positive with the players. With respect to the three-point shot, I think it would have had a, 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 an interesting impact, especially in the final game, because Jim and uh, Morris, Bob Morris for Verezzi, would have been, you know, knocking the lights out of the three-pointers, and it would have been an interesting game. The Russian game, uh, I think we would have had advantage because I don't think they had the long-range shooters that we had with, uh, with Tal and Jim. So I think that's how it would have impacted the game. We probably would have beat the Russians by more. Okay. Anybody? We had good long-range shooters. Uh, Tal could have shot the heck out of three points. And Mickey and, and Lou. Lou scored 19 points on me in Fargill D and uh, shot 18 for 18, all from the stands. Um, what affected me the most, you know, I look back – we never saw a video of ourselves. Our games were never recorded. Um, we never had films that we could look at ourselves. And uh, today, when they go over games and see how you play and uh, strategy and stuff, I never, I don't think I ever saw myself playing in a game. 
I would have played different. <laughs> I see myself now, and I realize how good these other players were that I played with. Mickey, uh, Mickey was phenomenal. Um, Tal just got better as he got older. I hated to see him retire. He made everyone better around him. Um, we would have shot the heck out of three points. Um, we were pretty good athletes, and we would have ad uh, adapted. Um, I miss all you guys. Yeah. <laughs> I, have a, I have a reply to that also. Um, and let's just uh, tell Mickey Berkovich to unmute. Remember, guys, before you speak, just uh, unmute yourself. Okay. You can hear me now? We can hear you now. No, I give Bob. If Bob wants to say something. Okay, I was just going to say that the three-point game opens up the court. It opens up the middle. And uh, uh, we used to run a lot and drive to the basket. Uh, and uh, so the combination of the three-point uh, with uh, opening up the, the middle of the court, I think would just would have made us better, would have worked to our advantage. Thanks, Mickey. <laughs> First of all, Eric, we miss you very much, and I'm happy to see you after so many years. As a, po a part one of you that about, about the question that we had before, that first of all, as Israeli, I can talk about Israeli players, Moti and Shuki, Maccabi Tel Aviv, it was, it was like a national team for us. It was a dream come true to every player in Israel, doesn't matter for where he came, playing for Maccabi Tel Aviv. And for me, it was a dream as a kid. I was studying when I was 14 and years old, playing Maccabi Tel Aviv, building, you know, the confidence that I can make the first team, after Tal came, I was watching him playing. I learned a lot from Tal, how to behave all out, off court, on court. And I think Maccabi Tel Aviv teach me as a kid, we have to, it's one target. Championship, 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 you have to win. And that's why they taught me and uh, we did it. Uh, against Cheska, it wasn't a game. It was more than politics. Israel, the small Israeli country, again, the big Russian. And we did a, a dream come true. We didn't believe it, but we, we made it. About the other question about the three-pointer, I think the game, you don't win only by shooting. You have to bring your spirit, your attitude. And we had a team that each one fit the other one. It's like a le logo, Lego. We got everybody help each other. And Moti on the defense, steals. Shuki on the rebound myself as a shot and the other guys, we play excellent, excellent. And uh, it was my birthday, 17th of February. So Shamlu came to me and told me, after he gave me the cake and then everything, at the pre, before the game, he said, Mickey, what do you want? Something special before your game, before this game. I said, I would like that all is well. We remember 17th of February, it's a big day. And thank you guys that everybody remember 17th of February. And we had a great team, and I don't think there can be another team, person by person, like we had in our, hi in our history. That's it. Okay. If you don't mind, I'm going to ask some folks who did not speak yet to share their feelings and ideas. Uh, we have Moti Aoresti and Olsi Perry, and also Chris Boatwright. Why don't you share your own words, what it meant to you and Jim uh, to win this game? And also Shuki, we have Shuki. And Shuki Schwartz. Um, for, uh, for us to win the game, um, I was down in Ashkelon with friends watching and um, um, Israel became a home, a family to me. The team was a family to me. I, as I watch everybody right now, I am, I, I'm pushing back tears because I, Every one of the players were like family. And, um, you know, one of the questions about the NBA, you know, and I said it in the film, for Jim, this was so much more important than an NBA win. He, he was beyond, he was over the moon because he loved Israel so much. So, um, uh, it's so good to see all of you players. I would love to see wives too, but we were a family and I know that's what helped 
like like Mickey just said, the Lego effect. We were a family, um, husbands and wives, and even kids. So um, thank you so much for letting me speak because my heart is full of love for all of this. Thank you for speaking. We enjoy hearing what you feel. It's uh, you're part of the team, like everybody else. There's no other way to think about it. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, let's hear from Moti Aroesti if you can unmute yourself, share your thoughts. Uh, and you'll need to unmute Moti, or I'll ask Noah, the admin, to unmute you. Moti, upper right hand corner, push the screen and then just <laughs> unmute. I made a special mug, you know, for cases like this, remember to unmute so people will remember to do that. So we'll ask uh, Noah to help him. Yeah, meanwhile, maybe I'll see Perry's unmute. Can I find Moti, hold on. Just in the meanwhile. The, for, I gotta for go to work. Yeah. Yeah, we were joking that you're very good at basketball and Zoom, maybe not so much. I'm wearing my scrubs. I got to go to work. I'm a registered I'm a registered nurse today, and I really do have to go to work. I love okay. you guys. I thought we were going at one o'clock. I hate to get up now. I've been waiting like uh, years for this, and uh, I got to go. We're, we're going to record it there, so you can watch it later. Okay. Okay. All right. Shuki. Me kagela kulam. Me ivrichli dain had. Okay. <laughs> Okay, Shuki Schwartz, do you want to go next? Yeah, yeah, sure, thanks. Uh, first of all, uh, my friends have mentioned it already, but I think that uh, one of the unique things that uh, we had in our team is the teamwork. I think that uh, even in life and even in any other business organization, the most important thing is how to build the right team. If you have stars, if you have very talented people, this is not enough. And you have to know, you have to work hard, but you have to know how to play together. And I think that there was a very special team because each one of the, mem of the members of the team was uh, himself a winner. As Eric mentioned, as Mickey have mentioned, but when it comes to play together, this is, this was our secret, and I think that by saying that today, 43 years later, most of us, I think, except Eric, that I didn't meet him and didn't see him for for a long time, all the rest of us are our friends. We are meeting. We are seeing each other. We are really friends. And that was the secret of the team. And I think that we feel it till now. Fantastic. Let's try Olsi Perry. Can you uh, hear us? And we'll ask some help to unmute Olsi again. I'll see, I think you're on mute. We can't hear him though. Okay, um, let's try Moti one more time and then we'll move on to the next question. Okay guys, let's move on to the next question. We have a question. How does the team reflect on the inspiration that you gave Natan Sharansky during his nine-year captivity in Russia by winning the Russian team? Who would like to take that? I don't, I don't mind taking it, Ori, but I, I do like to say, what you, to answer your first question, that I think that we would probably have been one of the most unbelievable teams in Europe at that time eh, because today where everything is the shooting from the outside, all the teams had very strong inside players. Uh, we had Olsi Perry at center that was very elegant, 
but he had to go up against some of the toughest centers, uh, Dino Meneghin and those type of guys in Europe, and Olsi with Eric underneath the basket, and then Shuki on the side. But we had great shooters, Lou Silver, Jim Boltright from the side. I mean, Bob Morse, uh, they were on the same caliber as Bob Morse and probably, even, you know, sometimes even better, you know, depending on every game. And we had four guards that can shoot from the outside. So we had really a team that could have adapted to the change of basketball that came after. I mean, nobody is like Steph Curry and the, the type of guys that you have in the NBA today because all the ball handling rules have changed. In our days, if all our guards at that time would, would move the ball like they do today, it would be called palming and we would lose the ball. Or if we were to take the ball and put it through our legs, the coach would have took us out of the game. So it's a different game. But the guys that we had on that team were built for an outside game. Shuki could shoot from the outside. Of course, Lou and Jim were great shooters from the outside. It also, where he could go to the corners and shoot just as good as anybody, anybody else on any European team. So we could have played with even without a center. But uh, that was the time. And we had to go up against strong teams underneath the basket. But we had to play that type of game as well. But we were basically a team. We could have been an unbelievable team, probably the best in Europe at that time as well, for the shooting ability that we had on our team. So that I just wanted to relate to the first question. You know, let somebody else answer the second question as you go along. And I could answer it as well. But, yeah. you know, we have a lot of guys that know the influence of Natan Sharansky and what he meant to Israel. Uh, the spirit of Nathan Cheransky and the fact that he looked at our team that uh, winning against the Russians and being nine years in, in, not in, in solitary Siberia, that his spirit for those nine years were carried in prison. The fact that Maccabi Tel Aviv was able to beat, it's not only the Russian team, it was the Soviet Union team. You take over 66 guys from Europe that are playing in the NBA today. They're from the Soviet, the 22 or 20 some countries from the Soviet Union, Croatia. You take uh, the, the Serbia, Croatia, Slovenia, Ukraine, Russia itself. They took the best players of 22 countries and put them into one team to play against us. And so Nathan Sharansky gave also a spirit to our team. Yeah, I think also the guys can uh, mention the fact that Ralph Klein, Coach Klein, used that before the game on his motivational speech. So maybe some of the other guys wanted to talk about Coach Klein and how he used Tebe, like Sharansky, in order to bring the spirit to the team and make them win. So, uh, Mickey, just unmute yourself and then we can continue. Yeah. There you go. Okay? Yep. Always Ralph Klein was in the locker room was telling us something to motivate us. And uh, about Sharansky, about all the Jewish Russians that are in Russia, he said that if we shall win the game, you know, if the Italian will win the game, they will take a cup. Nobody in Bereza will be happy so much. They will read the paper and throw the paper and it's going on, moving on. But if we shall win the game, the first time European Championship, all these were will be behind us. Everybody will be happy. And not to ask you, the old Jewish, Jewish people that are in Russia will celebrate too for us. Now, after so many, many years, I meet a lot of Jewish, Jewish Russian people that are coming to me and say, hey, Miki, you know, when you play against CSK 77, we were hearing the game on, tr on transistor, you know, transistor, a small radio in the, in the valley or in the farm or any place that nobody will see us. And we were so happy that you won the game. So I, I know that I said before, Maccabi Tel Aviv, for us, it not, was, wasn't a game of basketball. It was something big, big, big. And we are always, when we play in Europe, we, I felt, and I, my friend felt, as ambassador of the Israeli small country. 
And we did it by the by hard way. All our players together. The coach Ralph Klein was our best coach that time. And I'm happy to be a part of this team. That's it. Okay. Uh, let's see if anybody else has another comment and then we're going to switch the format. Just have you guys talk among yourself. I know it's making Danny's dream come true and that's why we're <laughs> all here. So any yep. other comment on the last question? And if not, we'll just ask you, Tal, Mickey, Bob, Olsi, Lou, just share with us some anecdotes that perhaps no one would know about the game or about your team so people can have some fun during these trying times. And who was the funniest? You know, I want to know who was, like, the funniest in the team. Mickey. Mickey was the one. Yeah. <laughs> Mickey was the one. <laughs> Give us some examples. As I, said, no, I think that, as I said, we are, we are like a family. We, we have a joke. You can say, well, something. Everybody is laughing because we had a long, long history together. Uh, we are friends. Today we are friends. Family, our, our children are friends. Uh, but I can say something funny. I didn't uh, thought about something, but maybe Moti maybe can say something. Maybe met Moti. Moti knows it. I'm going to throw the ball to Moti. Always he throws me the ball. I'm going to catch, Moti, <laughs> catch the ball. <laughs> Danny, there was many funny things, but in our age, we don't remember them. Yeah. <laughs> Mickey, you said about the children, but uh, you have to remember, Danny, that uh, all of us now, we have grandchildren. Pal, you right. can tell the story about the airport with me when I was a rookie. Well, in, in Switzerland, I think it was. They're on the way to Switzerland. But it's a long story. I want, I'm, I'm very happy to hear Mickey, Moti, Shuki speaking English. I haven't heard him ever speak English. So I keep think... asking the Mickey and Moti and Shuki questions. You hear Lou? We like, we and like and to hear you speaking time. Hebrew, Tal. Uh, no. <laughs> <laughs> they all the time they criticize my Hebrew. So I want to hear him speak English. <laughs> Mickey, the... Mickey, no. tell the story. Mickey, tell the story about meeting, uh, meeting Olsi Perry when we came to the hotel. Shabu. In Shablu. In Shablu. I want to, yeah, I will tell the story. Yeah, yeah, you okay. know, you know how to tell it the, the best. Okay, uh, it was we went the team to Belgium. The beginning we had the uh, pre pre games before the season, and we were looking for big guy. We we're looking for big guy, and uh, we came for some games there. Uh, Shablu and myself we went out out of the bus, and wanted to go to the to the hotel to the lobby, and Shamuk said, I can't see nobody here, nobody here, nobody. And at the end, at the end, he saw somebody sitting on a big chair like this, big chair, like the only day, he saw his face. So he said, hey, that's the guy, that's the guy. He went running to the, the guy, black guy. Running, the black running. guy, yeah. Yeah, black guy, he was running to him, he said, hey, you're a, uh, the player, the player that's coming to for a trial, the guy came up and he was standing like this. That was his height. Like <laughs> Shamluk said, "Oh, sorry, 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 sorry," and Shamluk went back to us. And uh, that was something funny. And after that, Olsi came uh, to the hotel and another guy, big guy. His name I don't remember his name. Uh, he came Alan Floyd. Floyd. Yeah. Floyd, Floyd, yeah. Alan Floyd. Alan, Alan Floyd, yeah. So we had a game afternoon. We went to a uh, coffee and some cakes before the game. Olsi came down and Alan F Floyd came down too. When we saw Al Floyd, this Mr. Floyd, he went to the, the cookies and he did a set. He ate all the cookies. <laughs> he, he drank all the soda and the coke. And also was on the corner, sitting like this, standing like this. So at the end, we came, all the players said, hey, we should take the other one. He will not take our food. This one eats all our food, all our drinks. We don't take him. And he that had, guy is a team and player. Also had, and also was very lucky. Floyd 
went out five fouls, I think. He had five fouls in the game. He went out and also played a great, great game. So we, we decided together with the management, Ossi Perry will be our player. And we are happy till now that Ossi is with us. Really, very happy. That was a good try, Danny, but that key to that closet was locked away a long time ago by all the players. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Let's see if Ossi is unmuted. Yeah, if Ossi is unmuted, you know, Ossi can uh, refer um, to that, but, you know, he's always saying that uh, that cake changed his life because right. look where he is now. <laughs> you know, you know uh, uh, Danny, all our, you know, all the sport changed in Israel after the Munich Olympics. And even with Maccabi Tel Aviv, that all the security that we had after, you know, you have to really appreciate Maccabi Tel Aviv. We played in conditions after Munich that no other team in the world had to play where you have the anti-terrorist squads of every country once you land at the airport until you leave the airport. Now, one funny thing happened in a game in Greece that the security people, they told us, if you hear this horn, you foghorn, you have to head for the locker room because there's most likely a terrorist attack or something going on. And so the first timeout, the scorekeeper, it's not like the scorekeepers of today, you know, and the clocks. So the scorekeeper had a horn similar to the security. So when he blew the horn, we went, like most of the guys that were with Maccabi were used to it, and we went to the coach. But the two foreign players headed to the locker room. And the coach couldn't say, hey, wait a minute, where's our two foreign players on our team? And they, then we said to them, they must have went to the locker room. They obeyed the rules and they heard the foghorn. They went to the locker room. So a lot of situations, you know, for a team, you really have to appreciate for Maccabi above and beyond basketball is that we had to deal off the court as much as we had to deal on the court. And we can't go into all the everything that all the rules that we had upon us, but uh, you have to appreciate Maccabi at Tel Aviv as a team to function within this surroundings. Also, some of the places that we would play, uh, on the Olsi's online, and he can tell you about what was in Italy when they cut off the heads of chickens and the Palestinians threw it onto the court, and not pleasant. But when you're playing, you, don't, you hear everything in a noise type sound you don't hear the words when if you're not playing you hear very much the words and it's a lot of places they're throwing coins and different things so as an Israeli team to win the European championship uh, six times you really have to appreciate it you know it's not only winning the European championship six times we're one international championship and also we're the first team outside of the United States that was granted an exhibition and honored in the James Naismith Basketball Hall of Fame in Springfield, Massachusetts. So all the guys that you see today are part of that. And Shimon Mizrahi that put everything together off the court, uh, battling against FIVA that didn't want to play the Final Four in Israel in uh, 2004. They said it's a dangerous place. Shimon Mizrahi went to Europe and convinced them that our security is so strong in Israel, nothing is going to happen. They had uh, the Chechnyans blew up uh, the people in the theater in uh, Russia, in, in Moscow. You had two terrorist attacks in uh, Spain. Uh, 170 people were killed. And Shimon Mizrahi, they told them that in Israel, nothing like this is going to happen. And all those European guys that from Spain and from Josh and from others that were on the, the FIBA and the EuroLeague committee, Shimon convinced them that in Tel Aviv you can play the Final Four. And then we did win the Final Four. We beat the Italian team by 44 points and nobody ever beat any other team in a Final Four as Maccabi Tel Aviv did in 2004. So with all these conditions outside of only basketball, uh, you have to appreciate the guys that you see on the screen today that, you know, lived through this. And it wasn't easy. It wasn't an easy period of time, and we're able to do it. Okay. 
other comments? We have about seven more minutes for this session here, then Facebook Live will go off and we can continue the conversation here on Zoom. Uh, I make, Ahuva, make, yeah. Let's yeah. see, Ahuva, can you unmute? Let's see if your sound works and also can say a few words. And Noah, can you see if you can unmute him? Can I ask a question? Yeah, give us one second. Let's see if Olsi can, can. Okay, Olsi, we can hear you now. Olsi? I think there is a problem in this. Yeah, in there's a problem sound. with the sound. Okay, uh, Mickey, were you trying to ask a question? No? Okay. Uh, to say something following up, uh, Tal, about the management. Go ahead. Uh, you mentioned not only uh, Shimon, but Ario, Ari Baranovic. And uh, they, uh, they took um, the, the team into their hands in 1969 and put it on a professional basis. Um, it was very significant also that we were paid on time. That actually matters. And that wasn't the standard in Israel at the time. This was a professionally run organization and that made a huge difference. I agree with uh, what other guys have said about the teamwork, uh, because without that, it's nothing. But I want to add something else, uh, which is the, the greater the pressure, the better we got. It just happened that way. A lot of times, it, it, you, under high pressure, people fold. But I felt if I was on the court with these guys, that everybody had my back. Uh, that, that's a big deal. Uh, so yeah, it's rare. I think it's rare, um, but it worked. I, I would like to elaborate a few words about uh, Ralf Klein. I think that uh, we've mentioned, but I think that Ralph was much more than a coach. He was our mentor. And, uh, you know, like Moti, Mickey, and myself, that we grew up in the youth uh, national team together. And he was coaching us for years already. So we knew him. And uh, I think that uh, his main advantage out of the profession, professional way that he uh, coached basketball, he knew how to touch, how to touch our hearts. <laughs> And this, you know, this is not easy. Sometimes a manager, a coach uh, can be great in the professional side, but in the uh, communication with the people, he, he, sometimes he cannot uh, do it the right way. And he touched it, he, he knew how to touch each one of us in a different way. And as a team. And I think that he was really a great, 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 Coach and person. Mm -hmm. Perfect. Yeah. Danny, do you have any questions you would like to ask? The yeah, team? yeah, yeah you, absolutely. Uh, I want to I, I want to tap to the fact that uh, Nancy Spielberg and I went to uh, interview Commissioner David Stern after you already <laughs> approached him, and that's a funny story by by itself. And uh, how did you meet uh, Commissioner David Stern that passed away not too long ago? Uh, Shimon, you're a good friend of, you were a good friend of Commissioner David Stern and part of what we're trying to do with the movie, and that's for Nancy and for Shimon Mizrahi, if you guys are still with us, is to show that basketball can be a larger, la a larger stage than just the sport. And with the movie, we try to show that uh, uh, we can fight against delegitimizing our country with wonderful positive stories of the history that the team did. Uh, 43 years ago. Uh, so I would love to hear from Shimon and from Nancy uh, a little bit more about how movies and sport can uh, work well for, uh, for showing Israel in, and spread the, our country in positive light. I would just remind you, you should only uh, stick to one minute answers because we're going to wrap this by 12 o'clock on Facebook. So Nancy, why don't you go first? Well, I think when we went to interview David Stern, I was really pretty amazed that that was such a, a big part of his discussion about the story was that it is so much more than sports. And, you know, it's all, it's exemplified in this film. 
And this is the films that we're involved in, many of them are about bringing messages that make a difference, you know, because film is the way that we can really get through to younger people, to all kinds of people. And um, strong, feel good stories about Israel and, you know, just to fight the uh, anti Israel sentiment that's out there and sadly is growing and the anti Semitism that's out there. So these are films that, that shed a good light on Israel that make uh, Jews feel proud and a time when sometimes it's a little tough. Um, and, you know, that's, listen, that's why I'm in it. That's basically why I'm in it. And David was very emotional about that and such a sweetheart and a, 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 a sad loss that, you know, that he's not with us. Okay. Shimon, uh, would you like to answer that as well? And then we will wrap on Facebook Live and we can continue here on Zoom. Ori, could I say something? Yeah, please go ahead, Chris. Um, I would like to go back to Shuki's um, comment uh, about, about Ralph. Um, he made Jim and I, he and Ruti made Jim and I feel like family from day one. And I think that is one of the reasons why Hello. the team was yeah. such, so strong. Um, yeah. Well, one second, Chris. Olsi, is that you? <laughs> I don't know. What a wow. What are yeah, you? Yeah, just, just don't touch anything. We can hear you, but hold on. Chris Boatwright okay. wants to finish her. Don't touch your computer. Don't touch your phone. It's all working. I, no, I'm not going to move. I'm not going to move. <laughs> don't move. This is the one time you should not move. Yes. Yeah. Okay. Let, let's have Chris finish uh, her comment, and then we'll go to you, Olsi. Okay. Uh, so uh, going back to the teamwork, the, the Lego, the, the great players. And, but I, I really want um, to say that Ralph was probably one of the guiding spirits of the team. And um, again, he and Ruti made um, us feel like family from day one. And um, I, I can't say enough about Ralph. Um, what a what an inspiration for all of us. Thank you, Chris. So let, we're going to wrap do, the Facebook yeah. Live. Noah, would thank you like to do the wrap? Yeah, thank you everybody for joining us. Um, please don't forget to go to IsraeliAmericans.org. There's a lot of uh, programs and uh, more activities, everything for free during these uh, times. And stay healthy and safe. Thank you. Anybody who wants to stay on the Zoom, feel free to stay, but we're going to wrap. Thank you so much for everybody on Facebook Live. All Thank you. It now was your time. Pleasure. Let's hear Thank your view. Thank you. Win. Thanks. The question is for everybody. Ralph, Ralph was a great coach, was a good coach, but remember, we went through Fred Devley and Abraham Hamel, and our team got better in spite of some of these coaches. And Ralph really did put it together um, at the end. But I don't even think Ralph thought we could beat the Russians. Uh, he was going to be happy if we lost by less than 30. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Well, see, let's hear your views. What do you think? What, what do I think? First thing, I think I was very blessed and very lucky. All my life was about basketball. And I had come to a point, uh, two years, I had tried to play professionally in the States and it didn't work. And it was September and I had looked to go to Europe from May. And it was September and I didn't have a job. So in my mind that uh, my dream was finished. To play professional ball was finished. And Sham Luke walked into the locker room uh, where I was playing in the Rucker final uh, summer league tournament for the championship and Sham Luke walked into the locker room and said, uh, my name is Sham Luke and I'm from Israel and I'm looking for a player. He could have said, I'm, some, I'm from Siberia. I was ready to go. And, uh, <laughs> <laughs> but he said two things. He said, first, I only need a player for six games. He said, uh, we're playing in the European Cup 25 years. We never made it to the, to the second round. And I told him I, I need a team for all year where I can work on my game and come back and try the NBA again. He said, oh, see, this is what we have. You play good these six games, another team will see you, you'll go to another team. He said, another thing, the coach needs to see you 
and the team now are playing practice games in Europe. So I went there, and uh, we, we won all the games uh, that we, we played there, and I had a, a good showing, and uh, made it to Maccabi. And once, and once I got to Israel, and we started... Uh-oh. Also, if you can hear us, you uh, might have touched the mute button again. So I'm going to hold my mug that says, remember to unmute, and ask you. And then, there you go. You're back on. OK. Uh, OK, so uh, we, 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 got, we, we, we started. We were winning and winning and winning. We made it past the first round, and we came up against the Russians. And nobody in the world, and I can tell you now, the NBA are still discussing discussing how we beat the Russians at, at, uh, at that time. It's still a big discussion going on now. Nobody believed how uh, we, uh, that we could beat the Russians, and we did. And a month and a half later, we won the European Cup. For me, that was the highlight of my career. That was it. But then I had another eight years of, of, with the best teammates in the world. As no, without question. Until today, we are the best friends. It's, it's, it's unbelievable. There's no team that I could have went to and, and had teammates that I had. There's no team. Nowhere. And no, no team that I could have went to and had the results that I had. It's unbelievable. Unbelievable. A dream come true. Okay. We have about 10 more minutes. Let's see what other questions we get. If anybody in the uh, audience... Yes. Can... Guys, is it all right to pass a question, please? Absolutely. Can you type it in the chat? Otherwise, we will have everybody speaking at once. So, Amit, is your yeah, Amit, uh, just write your question in the chat, and we will ask it. Okay. Uh, we have a quick question from a 15-year-old. Uh, uh, his name is Yuval. He says, "How can I play for Maccabi?" Uh, Tal or Olsi, is there a young uh, team that somebody can join in Israel into the Maccabi team? It's not, it's not about the team that you join. It's about the work that you put in. If you work and you really want to, uh, to become a professional player, it's about the work that you put in. That, that, that's it. That's the bottom line. It's the desire and the hard work that you put in. Okay. For, for, for me, I played. I, one thing, I was blessed. When I was 13 and a half, I was two meters tall. And for me, that was a stamp to be a basketball player. And I played before school, after school, in the rain, in the snow, I, I, late at night. It didn't matter. This is what I wanted to be, and this is what I worked at every day. Olsi, according to the Gashashim, you were born 180. <laughs> <laughs> but, uh, thir at 13 and a half, two meters tall, that was it. That was the stamp for me. Also, you're going to be a, a basketball player. And I worked at it. I worked every day, uh, every single day. I, I had a ball in my hand. My mother never had to worry about where I was at. Because the, the playground was right across the street from my house. And all she had to do was look out the window. I was out there shooting. Uh, Olsi, how tall are you? Now I'm 6'10". <laughs> <laughs> I'm two, two meters eight. <laughs> all right. Here, here's your next question, guys. Uh, from Amit, uh, who was at the game at Virton. He remember uh, when he was a kid that it was a very small gym, almost like a high school gym. He's asking, can you share what it was like playing in that little gym? Tal, do you want to start off? Okay, hold on. Okay. Uh, first of all, you have to understand that uh, that game was supposed to be played in Russia and it was supposed to be in Moscow and it was supposed to be played in Tel Aviv, the second game. But because the Russians refused, uh, as they're the military advisors for all the Arabic countries around us, uh, for seven years they refused to play us. But in 77, as I said, because they beat the U.S. team in 72, Sergei Belov, who I would meet uh, practically every year, we would come to be at the Legend Banquet and at the NBA suite at the All-Star Weekend, said that they convinced the Soviet government that because they beat the U.S. team, what do they have to be afraid of the Israeli team? Now, they chose Virpon, Virton, the neutral place, because Shimon and Leon Wandel didn't want to give up the game, and they chose Virton, right? You're right, 500 people. But they didn't realize that 498 would be 
uh, Israelis and Jews from Europe to come to support us, and only two KGB agents are cheering for the Russian team, for the Soviet team. And so for that, that was their biggest mistake, that they chose a very small high school, in fact, elementary school. I don't know, it was a terrible gymnasium. Uh, but every Israeli could find that place was there. There were more people outside than they were inside. And it gave us a home court advantage because when we walked onto the floor, it took them practically half a game to get over the shell shock. They were in a, in a uh, Mickey always says it in English, that they were in a coma, you know, but uh, they were in a coma, they were in a coma. Uh, and uh, they, they couldn't get out of it until half the game. Olsi blocked all their shots underneath the basket. We were running. And so their biggest mistake was playing in that small gymnasium, which they chose. It would have been a much difficult, get, more difficult game if they played on a normal, open, large, usually uh, as the gymnasiums they have in Europe, or the arenas in Europe. But they chose that small gymnasium. And that was their tragic mistake and our wonderful victory. Okay. Other comments on the small venue? Then we have another question. Okay, uh, we have one question about uh, Gomelsky, the Russian coach. Do you guys have any discussions with him, any relationship with him before or after the game? Well, I, I knew Gavel, uh, Gomelsky since I played with the U.S. team and the U.S. All-Star team, college All-Star team. When he came with the Russian team, to the United States, and he saw that I was playing with a mezuzah. So he came up to me and he says, uh, are you a Jewish boy? You're a Jewish boy? And I said, yes, that's a mezuzah. That was at the time you're allowed to play either with a, a Christian cross or a Jewish uh, mezuzah or a Star of David. And then at the World Championship, I saw him again. And unfortunately, that uh, he was more shell-shocked, I think, than, the, than his team. But I don't think he was so sorry that he lost to an Israeli team. And then, unfortunately, after everything and he retired, he came to Israel a few times to get treated. He, he died of cancer and he came to Israel to be treated to, from cancer. And he was a guest uh, for lunch at the house and at the swimming pool. And uh, yeah, so it was a nice relationship. And, He's the father of basketball. He's in the, the James Naismith Basketball Hall of Fame. He's one of the best coaches in the world, for, especially for Europe. And the, he developed all the Russian basketball. Uh, and that was uh, Alexander Gomelsky. Well, I didn't realize you're such a poly polyglot. You speak English, you speak Hebrew, now you speak Russian. So... <laughs> <laughs> I don't know where my language is. <laughs> Yeah, I, always thought, asking, you know, what, what I always thought it was funny that he said he lost to a team from Asia with uh, a bunch of Americans in the European Championship. We yeah, were better than we were. That's why we won. It wasn't a small gym. We would have beat him <laughs> in a gym. <laughs> okay. Uh, folks, we want to thank you for the time. Uh, I'm going to hand it over to Noah from IAC to wrap up and give you some information about seeing this later on because this is recorded and we can see it later on and you can share with friends. Thank you so much. Noah, I'm handing it to you. Thank you. Uh, thank you for joining us. As, uh, again, as always said, uh, we have it on our uh, Facebook page. You can watch it. You have it on Hey Jude Production as well. Um, that's it. Thank you. Stay safe, everybody. Thank you, Dani. Thank you. Thank you, Maccabi. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.